obs obstruction of you know the the true history of radio. Yeah, and that's what uh, Greenpeace is active in. But you know the Navy. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. They're, that organization now is so screwed up like everything else. You know, everybody needs, like, severe help right now. You know, and I'm kind of offering this. Yeah. Uh, but this paranoia and, uh, and weirdness in this country, I mean, you just can't be part of anything anymore because it's determined to destroy itself. Mm -hmm. So the Navy got ripped off. They, they kicked Marconi out of the United States and seized all his stations. Hello, welcome to the show. I'm Adam Ball, your host, and you're listening to Solomon Radio. Earlier in the studio, we interviewed by Telelink a very special guest, and exclusively, and it's none other than Eric Dollard himself. He's an RCA electrician, a transmission linesman, also a Bell Lab scientist and Navy engineer, and he's renowned as being practically the next Tesla. And on this show, Eric is going to be speaking for the first time about some of his more recent advances in electrical engineering theory, as well as radio and electrical history. Many people are going to be surprised in this interview because Eric reveals many amazing things. Dollard really does seem to be the next Tesla and the stories he has to tell, the events that he's witnessed and endured are rich and revealing in their details and importance. Eric Dollard's work forms a part of an electrical and radio history that an international cabal seems to have wanted to keep secret for interests of their own. Eric has shared all his work freely for decades and has taught us all so very much. Eric has a website, www.ericpdollard.com, that's ericpdollard.com, and also he has another website, www.fourthquadranttheory.com, and Right now he needs our donations so he can continue contributing with new presentations and lectures as well as finishing his great designs and paintings that he's published on the Energetic Forum. Such as the Cosmic Induction Generator and the Cosmic Ray Detector. Eric speaks with me about Einstein's Relativity, Radio Corporation of America, Marconi Wireless, a multiple loaded flat top antenna, the velocity of waves and an incredible amount more. Eric talks and proves yet again that as soon as we think we know something about the nature of electricity, we're told that we know nothing at all. For instance, it might not just be the faster than light pi over two times discharges of Wheatstone and Tesla that raise the hearts and pulse of scientists, but electricity and radio might not have a velocity at all. That would certainly be the most significant claim by any scientist or engineer I've ever heard, and what is different about Eric is that for the last two decades he's been producing and demonstrating this machinery to himself, his friends and the public freely. And he's ultimately paid the price, I think, for dedicating himself to create this important knowledge for everyone. Uh, shall we go straight in, shall we, to the interview? Hello there, good afternoon. Good afternoon, or good morning here. <laughs> good morning, Eric. It's great yeah. to hear from you. I guess it's good that I know Greenwich Mean Time because that's your time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's great. To, it's great to talk to you, Eric. Thank you so much for taking a, taking time out of your life to speak to me. Well, you're welcome. Uh, so where shall we start? Um, shall I just uh, speak and we'll go from there? Yeah, I kind of just rolled out of bed, so you're going to have to uh, see what you can, you know, kick me a few times and wake me up. <laughs> All right, I'll try to do that. Um, uh, so uh, you've, you've come to speak to me about what electricity and radio and the true wireless and Nikola Tesla? Well, whatever you want to talk about. Well, you know, you recently released a book on what, fullquadranttheory.com. Uh, well, the book is, uh, the book just got assembled uh it's still going to take time to get it all printed up and all that it's probably going to be i'd say about two months right. but i got a, i got another book coming out that's been suppressed for a long time and uh about 10 years and and now it's coming out is that the rca book eric yeah and then uh this uh whatever you want to call these people we call i we here we call them the gang of four uh they ended up getting some stuff uh all the way back to I, china and unfortunately, uh, this tech zombie, well, he's the head of it. 
Oh, no, you're kidding. I mean, I'd seen everything that was going on, and I knew that it was patently untrue, the things that were being said and banded around. Uh, pretty much every scene from the, the so-called uh, truth movies that, that Ray is putting out, I could see each one of them was, you know, uh, daisy-chaining second clips together to make it look like something, and it isn't completely out of context. Yeah, unfortunately, the whole thing was premeditated, and uh, I made the mistake of getting drawn into these people. Mm -hmm. uh, what, their, what their intent was was to, you know, glom on to basically my identity and, you know, and my reputation, and then uh, once they had a hold of that was to trash me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, well, uh, I mean, I, the, the, whole, the whole point was that Ray Savant was supposed to be raising money for you, to help yeah. you, well, and uh, it suddenly uh, turned into we. Yeah, that we. kind of was my surprise, you know, my... My EPD Laboratories is actually a uh, confidential, uh, mostly government-orientated project, and uh, these people just blew the whole security clearance on the matter. Huh. Yeah. So they I put a video expect... out showing the location, I remember, yeah. Was well, that a problem? You know, plus, plus the laboratory wasn't really even supposed to be, you know, there wasn't supposed to be a lot of advertisement of what was going on. Sure. And then, uh, you know, then all this negativity, you know, and all that stuff, and... Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, you know, I live in the woods most of the time, so it ultimately <laughs> makes no difference to me. They, so at any rate, I jammed them back pretty hard. But uh, the problem is now is I got to get a lot of money together to uh, uh, to get these people out of my life. Well, you know, uh, speaking of money, my partner donated a thousand dollars to you, but uh, Ray wanted to return it. Uh, I don't know if you knew that. What's that now? Uh, my, my partner donated $1,000 to you, but it got returned. Yeah, I closed the, uh, I closed the account uh, uh, with those people. I don't know exactly how to get any of that now. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm reconfiguring all that. I think Aaron might have started up something new. or. Well, you know, maybe uh, we could see about helping you out. Well, yeah, I mean, I got a... The thing is, see, is I was told I was going to be provided with this building... Mm -hmm. And uh, they would take care, or you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they ran off. They stole the organization, and, uh, and then they're telling me that it's not my, my, really my building anymore, and uh, and that I have to pay them to use it. So uh, you're kidding. At, yeah. At any rate, uh, so what I did is I just you know lashed out at them. That's why I'm T-Rex. <laughs> so, so that kind of, uh, you know, sets everything back. You know, plus, I really, after Landers got destroyed, I really lost interest in all this stuff anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, most of that equipment is completely irreplaceable, vacuum but tubes. You, yeah, I mean, you haven't even seen pictures of it yet. I'm trying to get this stuff out on the Internet, and uh, right. and it's just it's unbelievable what was destroyed. The two generations' worth of work. Oh, my God. Yeah, 30, I, I know 30. you've been working on it since at least the 80s. Yeah, and everybody, uh, after uh, they stole the Integratron from me, you know, then I moved in with a deranged World War II vet who, who wanted uh, to build his own Navy, uh, own Army base. Well, unfortunately, I was Navy, so we built our own Navy base. <laughs> and okay. it really was. It really was. It was, you know, a complete naval installation that I put together basically myself. And do you think that, that there's people that would perhaps benefit from from seeing you not develop that, that sort of... Well, basically, it was a, uh, you know, because I'm, I have no uh, recourse or defense, uh, it's easy to rip me off, so the uh, trustee of the property sold it out from underneath me. Yeah, that's right. So I couldn't even live in my own place anymore. Uh, yeah. you know, and then I'd come down there like once every four months to make sure the seismographs had paper and all that, you know, and the only way I could deal with it was to you know, use the product that was available in the neighborhood, which actually was a lot of fun when you have your own Navy base. <laughs> well, you know, don't worry about that. I mean, what I really wanted to talk to you about was, uh, you know, your tremendous knowledge and experience as a linesman, uh, a Bell Labs person, uh, your experience at RCA, uh, you know, about, you know, the color Tesla's wireless communications that could travel regardless of distance. I mean, that's one hell of a statement, isn't it, uh, just in itself. And I think a lot of people that listen to your work, it, it just doesn't seem to occur to them that he's talking literally regardless of space. I mean, would you say that was a fair assumption? Well, that was Tesla's aim. I mean, you know, I mean, I've, I've gone 
as far as I could in this, but people keep screwing it up. So at mm -hmm. Landers, uh, I developed a whole new type of antenna, an improvement over Tesla and Alexanderson. Uh, a lot of uh, fascinating results with it. Yeah. Uh, at at Bellinas, uh ultimately, you know, RCA uh, was my patron because they expected me <clears throat> to develop some kind of new system that would uh, circumvent the satellites, which were putting everything out of business. Yeah, well, I mean, they inherited what the uh, Marconi Wireless Polonas plant with the multiple loaded flat top antenna. Yeah, um, they, uh, uh, well, Marconi got kicked out of the country, and then GE moved Alexanderson in. Yeah. And, and uh, then once Alexanderson had established a, a functional working system that nobody else could really do, because the Marconi station in Bolinas really did not work. Marconi had to do a lot of covering up, particularly the Hawaii-Japan uh, right. uh, Japan link uh, just simply did not work. It was a joke. Really? Yeah. So, you know, they were using hideous amounts of power, and they could hardly get a signal across. And I mean, what, in 1909, Tesla was in a newspaper article, and it said that he he sent a signal around the world 24,000 miles in uh, 84 one-thousandths of a second. If you do the math... That's, what, 200 and 200 and odd, 290 odd thousand miles a second, same speed that Wheatstone uh, declared, pretty much, for the electrostatic discharge. Yeah, well, the, see, here's the thing that people don't understand is both the Tesla and Alexander sy Alexanderson systems and even the Marconi system, to a certain extent, do not have a velocity. Huh. So that's why... Uh, uh, Tesla, what Tesla is giving you is what's called an integrated value of a velocity that varies anywhere from the speed of light to infinity. Right. Uh, because that's there actually isn't really a velocity. That's what I discovered in all this dimensionally so, is there's so not a velocity. So that's where the regardless of distance comes from. Yeah. So the whole idea is just to uh, neutralize the dimension of space and just leave time. Mm, that's really so, interesting. Like the TMT, it's kind of like a, a time battery. You're compressing those capacitors. Well. Not really, but it, uh, uh, what it is is, is the, uh, the Tesla transformer is a phase converter. And okay. what it does is it takes the normal bipolar, uh, unfortunately people call it single phase, that's wrong, uh, mm -hmm. two phase, that's why there's always two wires. Two poles. Yeah, it takes the two poles and it converts them into one pole, which is mm -hmm. the earth pole. So right. that way you don't have to run a ground cable to the moon. <laughs> right, Okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's a specific question I wanted to ask you. Uh, in some of Tesla's more unknown work, he describes the situation of atomic radioactivity. Right. And he declares that if radium can be sufficiently shielded from the cosmic rays of stars, then the radium would cease to be radioactive altogether. Isn't this proof enough that things like radioactivity might not be caused by mass, and rather external things? Yeah, that was uh, Tesla's theory that radiation came from outside sources. Yeah, and it was pushing something outside of the kind of fibrous mass. Well, J.J. J. Thompson uh, uh, was also one that said, like, inertia and all these things weren't really a property of matter. They were a property of the electric field that attaches itself to matter. Mm. Uh, Le Bon uh, wrote a lot of books on it. He was kind of halfway in between the two theories. So uh, oh, That's really uh, interesting. Yeah, Le bon kind of... Uh, uh, said theories aren't worth much, but he just presents results of experiments, makes his interpretations, and then, you know, qualifies them by saying they're probably wrong, but, you know, we have to attempt it. Well, at least he does that. Other people, yeah. you know. He admits to being an inventive thinker. Yeah, you know, that we're dealing here. So he was the one that actually uh, uh, determined the ener energy ma mass relations and all that stuff, not Einstein. Uh, mm -hmm. So Le Bon's work is suppressed because of that. Yeah, because you know, they Einstein have picked it up. Well, Einstein, Einstein was deliberately created as an iconic uh, god figure to stop all further progress in science, yeah. particularly the electrical science. That's been, and well, I mean, compared to what Tesla said, I mean, it's, it's scornful of what Tesla says about relativity. He says, you know, I looked at the cosmic rays from Antares and I found them to be 50C, of which some were 500 times the speed of light, which I believe destroys the pillar of relativity. He says it you know, multiple times. Uh, it just seems to be ignored, and that's, that's yeah, why I well, follow the, your... The main, the main flaw with the theory of relativity uh, I discovered when I wrote that thing on the energetic form about Einstein was uh, mm -hmm. is it eliminates the use of dimension of space, mm -hmm. and, and everything is centered around the velocity of light, which is really a very artificial dimensionality. So everything yeah. is seen in terms of velocity of light, 
and uh, and they're kind of married to that. When you know when we're talking about Alex Anderson and Tesla radio wave propagations, there isn't a velocity. Right. Yeah. So it's quite possible. You know, the signal could get there before it arrived in uh, you know the most <laughs> extreme sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's like uh, turning on a switch and it, it causing a, a glove to come out and punch you before you turn it on, right? That's yeah. Like, that's so what you call the Einstein paradox. It can't be, but somehow it, it must be. You know, you well, I mean, after you've read, you know, several thousand pages of uh, Steinmetz's equations, you, f you find out what they're really expressing is, is waves that are propagating backwards in time and waves that are propagating forwards in time, and where they cross is the occurrence that's actually seen on the power line. Right, which links into your stuff with four-quadrant theory and counter space, no doubt. Your lead and lag time theory. Yeah, I mean, it's those are all, you know their own subjects, but uh, yeah. but the idea of counter space uh, uh, eliminates all this complexity and misunderstanding and relativity and all those type of things. Mm -hmm. So I adopted it uh, early on in the dimensions for electrical wave equations, and then it allows for a much better understanding of how all this stuff operates. But I can never keep anything together long enough or get far enough in a project before somebody screws it all up. Yeah, I mean, maybe someone doesn't like the idea of a four four pole electrical system. That's that's the only conclusion. Well, what it I is, what, what it is, is um, uh, the principle. Uh, th there's there's three or four different things. For one thing, you know, basically, I'm always destitute and I got no place to live, so people can do anything to me they want. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that's what the bulk of it is. That's you know what this uh, gang of four is the same thing. Let's, there's nothing he can do, you know. He'll just get them all pissed off, and he'll drive off in his car. <laughs> and you think you think that's because they don't they don't want you to construct this technology. They don't want yeah, you to get the Mallory book out. Yeah, it appears what it is 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 nobody's supposed to know about any radio before mm -hmm. RCA. Mm -hmm. In other words, all there is is electromagnetism, which means all there is is Einstein. Well, that's funny because I came to exactly the same conclusion uh, using your work, uh, Nikola Tesla's work, and Edward Scanlon's work. But your work was particularly critical. Uh, you know, well, the, you thing, the thing about my work that's different from uh, all this other stuff is you can duplicate it. Right. And it, it works, and uh, you know, I mean, if they have, if these people have to disturb the situation. RCA got, you know, we got started on this when I got out of the Navy and came back to, uh, you know, to actually be employed by the company and put the uh, the new satellite station together, all the infighting and everything, you know, and bureaucracy screwed all that up. But the uh, district vice president uh, basically, you know, made everything available to me that the company could yeah. because the uh, it was time for a new radio system, and the guy knew that I was the one to come up with it. And you developed an antenna, didn't but, you? You uh, developed your own... Well, here, but here's what happened, okay? And so, you know, that's what everybody wanted, but mm -hmm. how did we go about doing this? You see, at that time, I, I, I had uh, rediscovered a lot of Tesla's stuff without even knowing about Tesla. Right. Uh, I wasn't looking at that route. I was looking at, you know, the, the same avenue of uh, that most people at the time, you know, of new types of modulation uh, to, uh, you know, increase the... Uh, the, the bandwidth capabilities and all that type of crap, you know, that mm -hmm. utilize all this horrible mathematics and complexity. But at any rate, I was all set up, you know, to start studying. Uh, and then that laboratory got destroyed when Di Diane Feinstein trashed San Francisco. Uh -huh. uh, that was my first big loss. I, I lost 25,000 pounds of equipment that was donated to me by RCA, including all the files and blueprints going all the way back to Alex Anderson, all disappeared. So let me get this right. Uh, political transition equals scientific destruction. Exactly. Feinstein raped San Francisco and, uh, <laughs> and you know, screwed the yeah. Navy up, and, you know, the Navy got thrown out, and then that shut yeah. down the maritime business, which was, you know, my business was the maritime business. Yeah. So, uh, so that kind of, uh, but at any rate. Uh, so I mean, many, many so, skeptical. So, but, but to continue the story, okay. uh, you know, so on and off, you know, I w RCA died, and you know, and other organizations came in there to keep the station going, the KPH, and you know, then some some administrations I'd be blacklisted, and other administrations, you know, all come on back, you know, welcome with open <laughs> arms, and the whole thing. So by the time that you know, that's uh, obviously because they wanted something. Yeah, yeah, after about, well, they needed me there hmm. 
because I was basically supposed to be the next chief engineer of the station. In fact, actually, it was the RCA administration's intent that I inherit the entire facility. Okay. Uh, and I uh, was doing that through the Coast Guard. Uh, right. I was using the United States Coast Guard to uh, – they were very interested in all this stuff, and, and they were trying to help me recover this facility and, and move their circuits over to there because they had more – uh, things to transmit, then they had transmitters, and uh, they were very interested in the Tesla stuff. But see, originally, none of us knew that what was going to happen was is something equivalent to the Wardenclyffe Tower was going to get built in Bolinas, and that was the final realization is that was the new radio. Hmm. So what so I did is I, I started to um, – you know, construct a, uh, a prototype using the uh, Alexanderson Grounding Network, which is still intact, and uh, to begin transmission. Well, and they must have went crazy after that, then. At that point, the station lost its license. It was stolen by the competitor. Yeah. Uh, MCI went out of business. Yeah, that uh, sounds just like what happened uh, with Wardenclyffe. Attempted to destroy the station uh, and, and let Commonweal have the whole thing. Uh, I stopped that, uh, so there is still something there. Yeah. Uh, then uh, at that point, all the uh, government officials in the Park Service I was working with vanished. Uh, the Coast Guard got cut off and uh, was quite upset about the situation. They even sent people to the Coast Guard uh, telling them that they shouldn't be doing business to me. Well, you know, you don't walk up to the military onto one of their bases and yeah. tell them who they should be talking to. Yeah. Uh, they didn't like that. So what the, the Coast Guard <laughs> did is uh, – you know, when they'd have the cops and the rangers harassing me, I could just drive on the Coast Guard base, and they couldn't go. They did have the authorization to go on the other side of the big restricted area sign, and I did. Right. So, so I just parked there and go and go back to sleep in my car, and there wasn't anything they could do. And it just boiled their blood. I love that kind of stuff. You know. <laughs> uh, so, sure. I mean, it was basically what was you know destiny had planned for Bolinas. Uh, these evil scallywags had, uh, you know, screwed it all up and made it impossible. Mm. So, you know, so that whole, so that's what stopped it. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like Osram all over again. You know, don't sell it for that price when you could sell it for this price. Well, see, the thing is, I mean, this kind of eliminates the government conspiracy theory because the Coast Guard mm. and the uh, uh, the Park Service officials were my friends. Uh huh. So we got but, something you know, else. It's got something else going on here. You still uh, got I'm a start, corporate start, conspiracy. Start, well, it's, uh, you know, the United States has, has enemies. One's called China. Mm -hmm. And uh, even that, even that, uh, that lecture uh, uh, thing, you know, that Aaron put together uh, was severely attacked by the Chinese. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did see I, that there was... Severely attacked by the Chinese. Uh the whole electrical system of the country is being wired all goofy, and I think the Chinese are behind that. Huh. Uh, you know, I mean, I've kind of... You're, you know, you're saying that the infrastructure of America is weak, and it's been done intentionally. Well, it's Possibly. a possi good possibility. Huh. Uh, the other thing is there's no more engineers. So the, huh. whole, po the whole power system's out of control. It's insurance like, company. It's, it's like you're on a railroad train, you know, big, long train with about four or five locomotives, you know, that's lugged up to the top of the ridge, and it's going down the other side, you know, and you're sitting in there, you know, in some uh, boxcar, you know, and you just get this feeling, and things going faster and faster, and you start climbing <laughs> to see what's going on, and there's nobody at the controls. <laughs> that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. Well, I mean, it's scary for me that, you know, Marconi, is, Marconi got uh, awarded, you know, the credit for radio. And then when people had finished with him, they had that taken away from him, and Tesla was out of the scene by then, so it didn't matter that, that Tesla yeah. got credit. It just sort of just seemed to be like a very uh, organized kind of obs obstruction of, you know, the, the true history of radio. Yeah, and that's what uh, Greenpeace is active in. But, you know, the Navy... Uh you know, I mean, I don't know. They're, that organization now is so screwed up like everything else. You know, everybody needs, like, severe help right now. You know, and I'm kind of offering this, yeah. uh, but this paranoia and uh, and weirdness in this country, I mean, you just can't be part of anything anymore because it's determined to destroy itself. Uh -huh. So the Navy got ripped off. They, they kicked Marconi out of the United States and seized all his stations. They were sick of him. 
Yeah. You know, they're sick of all the, the shysters like Lady Forest, you know, and they're putting all this stuff on their ships and it doesn't work. So, um, so basically, you know, I mean, I'm in a position to, uh, uh, to give that back to the Navy mm -hmm. or at least put it back in the Maritime Commercial Service, but uh, you can't do anything in this country. Well, surely the Navy wants it. It's just they're being obstructed from having it in the same way that you're being obstructed. Well, the, the one problem is, is I can't find the right people to talk to. Well, you know, when it, when it comes to obstructing someone, the best thing to do is to infiltrate the organization and just hope that everyone attacks each other and you don't have to do anything. Well, that's kind of what this Ray uh, Muhammad Savant was uh, effective in doing, but, uh, but I, I suspect that, uh, that all these people have been conspiring beforehand. You know, judging by the way people's attitudes would change on the telephone, and, and you know, I saw a shift occur. And people that I thought, you know, like David Webster, that were helping me, uh, their personalities yeah. changed uh, uh, once, you know, they got their fingers in my organization. They all became different people. No kidding. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, I think a lot of it is just greed and glory, you know, infected their bloodstreams by this uh, Muhammad character is a, is a real, you know, he's, he's a real work of art, let me tell you. Yeah, I've had some dealings with him. Yeah, so he's evil. Yeah, he's, 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 uh, he's possessed. He's possessed. He's evil. He's got a strange way of going about stuff. Yeah, well, I to have, say the very I, least. I had to, you know, basically live with the guy for two days. I, I didn't really want him at my facility, and and uh, you know, my uh, my partner in all this is, you know, going, why are we having a guy come to the laboratory named Muhammad? You know, and I, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's a good question. Oh, well, you know, he did want to help. He didn't yeah, want to help, and he helped you. Either, you know, and he said he was going to do all this stuff, and then when he got out there, uh, uh, you know, the guy, like, treated me shitty and said, like, you know, really weird yeah. stuff to me and everything, and then I realized, you know, that uh, yeah. that, that, that I was in their way. Uh -huh. and, yeah. uh, and I mean, it wasn't my laboratory. Uh, that so was what, a setup. What it was for me, it was the whole ether force deal with, uh, you know, Basically, you know, warriors, come on, unite, attack Holland Bales, uh, a thousand points for, you know, uh, knocking on his door, you know, 50 points for calling him on the phone. And I thought, Jesus Christ, someone is going to get hurt. Well, I, I would assume yeah. that would happen to Holland Bales, uh, but it should have <laughs> happened when I still had the facility. Yeah. yeah. So what good is it now? Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I just don't want to see anything happen to you. So, you know, when, when that was being spread, I was worried. Well, that's, that's the other, yeah, because uh, this Ray guy really, like, promotes violence. And, and now I have to worry about that he's going to direct that at me. Or, you know, he's already threatened Aaron. See, what happened mm -hmm. was is uh, they thought they could get away with it uh, because normally you can. Uh, let's see, what well, I forgot what my point was. Oh, so what he did uh, is I had, you know, the guy that, that builds all this stuff with me and uh, mm -hmm. whatever. Well, he lives in the redwoods and, you know, in the bushes too. That's how I met him. But mm -hmm. the guy's got an IQ of about 160. His father is, uh, you know, the number one uh, audio electronics guy in mm -hmm. the whole Bay Area. His grandfather, you know, is Bell Telephone. Well, that's why I'm hanging out with this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so at any rate, he comes out because he does carpentry work for a living, building houses and is really good. Uh, sure. So I, I needed the... Uh, uh, the contractors in, uh, in where, you know, the building's going up in Tonopah were useless. They charged lots of money, made a mess, so I had to have my guy come out and hire him. He needed the money, hire mm -hmm. him. So I uh, thought he was just some stupid cowboy, you know, because he works on, a, you know, a cattle ranch and stuff with another yeah. Eric, uh, you know, that's a friend of ours. Uh, and uh, so he uh, tells, uh, tells him the entire plot of what they're going to do to me. Just spills the whole beans right to the guy, and uh, you are kidding? No, yeah, uh, actually a couple of times, and then you know, and then my friend, uh, you know, he, no uh, way. He comes in and tells me he goes, uh, "This is really weird," and and I'd already known it because my subconscious had picked it up, and I was having like you know I mean, flash, flashback <sighs> nightmares from other uh, like you know this thing that happened. From other episodes, they, yeah. They, they kidnapped me, and I lost my celica. And uh, and so I mean, I, I, all I, these dreams. So it tells me all this shit. And uh, thank God. Uh, so so once uh, found out that that was an idiot, and you know, then was reacting uh, 
negatively, you know, to, to look in and, and yeah. you know, found out that actually this guy's part of the operation. Well, then they started a character assassination uh, program. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so then you know was they're trying to help of, Eric. Let's slaughter yeah, him. Trying, yeah, they're trying to help Eric. Help themselves is the right word. Help themselves to Eric. <laughs> and uh, so at any rate, uh, well, I, I know, tried so, to say so something. Not, well, that doesn't stop there. So then uh, you know starts right, whacking right. on him, smart and determined, and uh, very meth- methodical. So he starts chewing and digging, uh, you know, like some kind of flesh eating uh, bacteria into uh, in personality. Uh, hmm. So so at any rate, I come up here. Uh, you know, to uh, do this conference thing with Aaron. I'd never even met Aaron before. I just, you know, I figured I owed him that because the energetic forum got me from destitution, you know, where I've got money and I could do things and move around. And yeah, I've been following it over the last few years. So, uh, so at any rate, uh, what they did is they started uh, harassing Aaron. Well, Aaron's not a good person to harass. So, so they got, like, real shitty with him, and then they pissed him off. Uh, see, because what they wanted to do is it is is Aaron is in a position to help me get my stuff out and and you yeah. know be funding and all that type of stuff. So uh, and they from what I can see, he's doing that. Pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. You shouldn't have any more dealings with the energetic form. Well, don't tell me who I'm going to have dealings with. Uh, you know, if I find something that works, I stick with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it didn't make any sense to me why they were so adamant on uh, that I don't have any more business with Aaron. So uh, so then Aaron shows up, and I tell Aaron what these people had done, and we found out, well, then they wigged, because now they knew, uh, you know, that uh, they couldn't pull anything on me now, because I had two people yeah. that were completely aware of what's going on, and also there's another person that they've been trying to shun that's on the board of directors who's telephone company guy, you know, an actual business, and, you know, and, and our stuff goes all the way back, you know, from we were like 16 years old in San Francisco. Huh. So now there's three people, uh, and, uh, you know, and they just keep pushing, and then, then, you know, and harassing Aaron and telling me that the money I got from the convention is not mine, uh, that I have to give it to them, and, well, then they pissed me off, and... Uh, <laughs> So finally, uh, uh, they told me that they were going to put this race of on on the board of directors of my organization, uh, you know, whether I liked it or not. So right. I put the thing out on the Energic Forum, and that just, you know, that threw the chain across the bus bars and started the ball lightning. Yeah. And, uh, and just swept through the whole switchboard and burned everything in smithereens, because that's how I work. So mm-hmm. now, uh, so now, uh, uh, you know, uh, Muhammad has to go into. Uh, is jihadist fanaticist uh, mode and just uh, all that guy does. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. Believe me. Well, that sure looks like somebody that wants to help Eric, doesn't it? Well, I thought I thought in January that something was wrong, and uh, you know, before before much had happened, I'd pushed the issue, and uh, as soon as I knew it, my partner's a thousand dollar was refunded from the Indiegogo campaign. They tried to refund me my $100, and I said, oh, no, no. I want Eric to, you know, Eric can keep the money. he take it. Uh, well, see, they, they, they had represented to me that, you know, that you were a madman and you were making all this trouble. And, uh, well, you know, I, I got a book from you uh, uh-huh. and a letter. Unfortunately, I can't have any possessions because uh-huh. uh, it won't fit in the Corolla. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the letter uh, was kind of out there ranting and scared me a little bit, to yeah. be honest. Sorry. Uh, and, you know, and the book was kind of ranting, but there were some interesting pictures, so I didn't know. Yeah, uh, I know. I was, I was cautious about writing back because, yeah. you know, plus, you know, I get like hundreds of letters. No, I completely understand. You don't have to apologize but, but, to but, me. But then I found out, you see, there was something fraudulent going on. Is uh, I learned later, in fact, just recently. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, you were promised a letter, people yeah. were being promised things, and they didn't tell me about any of it. Yeah, I, I, I suspected that all along. Because anytime, anytime anybody gives me, anybody that sends me money always gets a letter back, unless, well, now, you know, things are so stirred up, it's a lot harder. No, I completely uh, understand. You don't have to send me a letter if you're speaking to me now, and, uh, you know, I just really appreciate you taking your time to kind of explain it to me more than anything. Well, I think everybody really needs to know about it because these people are making so much trouble. Uh, I think, you know, I've, I've given a couple of public interviews now and have said my piece on the thing. So anybody that believes these people, you know, is just stupid and uh, there's no point in trying to convince them anyway. Mm.
<laughs> I mean, I, that's pretty much it, really. Well, I don't know what any of it's going to come to. Yeah. No. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's clear that Ray doesn't want you to, to you know, get control back of your organization, or he wouldn't have seek, seek to ruin your reputation. That's what he's trying to do. He's not succeeding. Yeah. He isn't. And there's people out there like me that are saying, well, actually, you know, Chris Eric Gollard is a reasonable guy, and he's got a whole bunch of history behind him from RCA that stems back to Marconi and Bolognese. So, you know, to say that he is just some freak is not, it's not acceptable. You know, he got together with, uh, you know, some of the, the, that I've dealt with in the past, you know, that caused me to lose my pet coyote, you know, and, mm -hmm. and basically facilitated the loss of landers, you know, and more people that, you know, oh, will help you. And then what they do is they screw me up. So, uh, so uh, I'd gotten together with those people very early on. In other words, they had planned to do this all along. And he comes out, the guy's got a forked tongue with, uh, you know, I've never this seen is, a tongue I mean, split. I'm, I'm truly you know, telling people that, you know, scary. oh, we're trying to help Eric and all that. Meanwhile, he's compiling some kind of, uh, uh, you know, like case against me to find out, you know, that this guy is, is, you know, starting to say all this stuff. So what the does is he sends all these defamatory letters to people. Uh, he, huh? calls the, uh, he calls the main government official that I'm working with on this that, you know, is uh, – He's the uh, unseen director of, of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that this, these people have been going around behind the scenes, slandering me and trying to put me out of operation. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. That, that is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I had so, suspicions so they, in January. You yeah, know, so they, they, they really need a lot of public exposure. So, so I call their organization uh, etherfarce.nem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they are the gang of four. Yeah. And I want to make them famous. And, well, uh, do not get involved with those people. They are the kiss of death. You know, I was threatened as well, so I know exactly what you mean, you know. When I complained about not getting my letter, I was right. told, you know, you know, uh, in no uncertain terms, uh, you know, don't, don't come to us anymore or we'll slander you kind of thing. That's, that's what Ray was saying. Yeah, uh, well, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. So at any rate, uh, you know, this book is being processed. I'm happy about that, so, because I'd stopped writing because of the Depression. And uh, so at any rate, uh, you know, here now i got to make some presentation, you know, the one that I just did. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where to begin. So I came up here and, uh, you know, and found out who it is I'm going to be dealing with, uh, you know, where I'm going to stay, all the, you know, do I want to get involved, uh, you know, what are the NEMS, and, uh, you know, did a surveillance operation, yeah. see if, you know, if I wanted to even get involved, and it all looked fine, and then and Aaron, uh, you know, we got on the Internet, and I got about 150 drawings and pictures, and I scurried back into the bushes with it and, and thought about each picture and, and wrote, you know, a couple of pages on each picture, and lo and behold, the thing turned into one of the most uh, detailed books I've ever written. So there you go. Uh... Just finished it. Uh, you know, like yesterday, we just finished the last pieces. Now somebody's got to type it up and uh, shuffle all the pictures and all that. So it's kind of funny how that happened. And, of course, you know, the swines are absolutely livid because, you know, yeah. Aaron has caused all this stuff to come about. Yeah. You know, plus he's, uh, you know, a defense campaign against them and, and – Huh. I mean, it's, uh, you know, illegally. Well, I mean... You, and, and also, you know, they've they're got some Facebook thing with my name on it, and they're, and they're saying things in my name, putting I've seen. my name on top of what yeah. they're saying, and, and there has to be a, a massive uh, a public awareness campaign. Uh, that, In fact, actually, what I want to do before I leave um, is, uh, I don't know, uh, I'll see if we can do it. Uh, what I want to do is I think I'll put something on the energetic forum with an address of how to get to it so everybody can watch what Eric Dollard Alter's ego is saying. It should be fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I think you should do that. I mean, I don't think you've yeah. got anything to hide from. Uh, you're very no, honest no, because, and intelligent well, that, guy. Well, that, but that exposes them. Yeah. Because it's not me. Yeah, I know. I know it's not you. You wouldn't yeah. say the things that he was saying. I'm, it's not me. So, uh, so great. It, it should be fascinating to watch, you know, what my alter ego is saying, and then you know, like do a comparison, and uh, I think it's fascinating. <laughs> Before you go, Eric, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> uh, your most recent and groundbreaking work on the cosmic ray detector on the Energetic Forum. Yeah, that's something I, I cooked up while I was wandering around in the forest one day. Yeah. 
And uh, that, I consider that the most important project of all. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm just uh, I'm just trying to get people started back on it again. And, and we did uh, uh, at this guy, Mark McKay, at this convention had duplicated the flat spiral coil and spark gap arrangement. And we actually did get the radiant matter to work for everybody to see. You could feel it coming out of the light bulb. Wow. Lucky so, pressure. Yeah, so that and it charges capacitors, so that's you know that reawakened my interest in that. Uh, you know, I, I regarded the cosmic ray detector thing as a uh, you know even like a a, a, sale, a sellable item is a Geiger counter that rings a phone bell. Well, you yeah. know, after that Japan uh, nuclear disaster, something like that would have sold like you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, the only problem, the only problem is there's not really a lot of these old parts left, so. If you try to see, that's another problem. Is I put this stuff out and I give these part numbers, and then they get all bought out, and then when I need something, I can't get it. So that's I'm, I have to stop doing that kind of stuff, unfortunately. Well, I mean, I've got one big question for you that I'm going to kick myself if I don't ask you. So I hope you don't okay. mind. Yeah. Uh, is it possible that the AC envelope propagating in the transmission line wire might itself interact as a sort of small cosmic induction generator that somehow somehow assists the large generator? at conveying electricity to such high distances. For instance, you have spoken in your work about unexplainable explosions from the center of transformer windings. Yeah, but o- only, only inside the transformer. Uh-huh. Uh, the lines don't exhibit any of those effects. Right. It's only inside the transformer that you get anything that the cosmic induction generator, you know, is basically all it is is a big transformer. Mm-hmm. So, they, you know, they use induction heating machines and what have you in industry, and, and this thing is basically that form of device. Well, but uh, you know, I, what, what I wanted to do is uh, is duplicate what I did in Santa Barbara when I uh, had built this thing out in the Integratron and then took it to Santa Barbara was mm-hmm. to have these giant uh, geometric discharges mm-hmm. uh, that play music. All right. That sounds neat. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. Some people refuse to believe it even exists. It's so uh, it's so unreal. So that's why I've got these big AM broadcast transmitters. And uh, but in order to finish this thing, I need another like thirty five thousand bucks. Well, you could get it on Indiegogo, Eric. People well, will support the, you. The problem is, is you know that was the next thing to go for. And it's they have done. run before you can walk. Yeah, yeah the, the gang of four has basically. That's, yeah, that's I mean, I said, I said to Ray from the beginning, Eric, you know, I know you might be against this. I know it's a sensitive uh, subject, but I said, you know, you, with this money you've got, you could build several rotary electrostatic generators or some sort of very small scale version, and you could sell them. You could make a big profit. No, it's not a good idea. There doesn't need to be any more RF interference. These, okay. these, things, these things are not toys. No, and, I didn't and, think they and, were. And, and that's one of the reasons why I've really uh, pulled back on, on telling people how to put this together. Because I see in this guy, you know, yeah. he's going to start putting spark gap, uh, you know, no, power supplies that. on these things and connecting it to this and that and generating. You know, people won't be able to listen to their AM radios for miles. Yeah. He doesn't care. He's a punk. And no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm going <laughs> to do what I want. Yeah. Crap. Well, the it, stuff that's really killing them is uh, the wireless antennas outside their house and in everybody's uh, computer room. Oh, yeah, the, the silly phone stuff is horrible. It's yeah. absolutely horrible. And, We've got and 4G now, Eric. Don't so, stop at 3G. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the power levels keep going up and up. Those, those cellular telephone and pager, uh, you know, and transmitting antenna clusters, those things are like 10, 20,000 watts RF. That's like a full-size radar. <laughs> You know, and this stuff is beaming right into people's, you know, living room windows. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I wrote a musical track with you speaking about that at one point to to try and get your work out a bit. Yeah, so that, uh, you know, that that okay. sent the, uh, the the cellular telephone company people, you know, were all over me in Bolinas because my surveillance equipment there had determined, you know, that these people... Uh, they were radiating people. Were, well, they were up to no good. <laughs> Uh, they were operating on frequencies that I had license to, and they didn't, uh, and that's illegal. So there's something uh, like some kind of uh, potential jamming function built into these things. Uh, the power level was so strong, I used a, uh, a Na- I had a small Navy uh, uh, radar countermeasures antenna, and I hooked a, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 what do you call it, silicon crystal detector to the thing, a little radar detector diode, and, and just in the... Uh, 
you know, the uh, the six inch square uh, aperture of mm -hmm. the antenna, I, I was receiving enough off that silly phone tower about a quarter mile away to actually charge small rechargeable batteries, free <laughs> electricity. That's a scary thought. <laughs> it's transverse <laughs> wave going through you, which means it has resistance. So what's that, tearing your chromosomes yeah, apart? Yeah, and then, you know, the people in the fire department, you know, that had this thing shoved on them, they really didn't want it, but uh, the syndicate forced them to put it in to, to make more money. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're getting the full exposure to this thing. And yeah, because it's on top I, of the... Yeah, uh, because they, they're walking around underneath it, and, you know, and I can feel mm. this stuff on my face. You know, it makes my eyes hurt. Yeah, I mean, my partner runs a nursery in a church, and actually the church thought it was a great idea to install one of these silly phone towels on the top of it. Yeah. My partner has children, you know, small children, you know, two, three years old. And, you know, the church was completely happy to do it. It's a scary thought, isn't it, when you think about it? Well, they don't know any better. And, yeah, you know, well, it's, this is a Babylonian it's story. It's uh, it's easy to build, like, small detector uh, boxes where, you know, you can walk around and see what the field strength of this stuff is. Mm -hmm. So Maybe that you could sell them. That'd be popular. Well, yeah, that's a good product or, you know, or at least encourage somebody else to build them and, and get them out there. I mean, all it is is, a, you know, a 1N23 uh, radar detector diode and a, uh, you know, a small, like, you know, adjustable whip antenna. Uh, crystal radio. So when I learned about this stuff, because some guy was paying me a hundred dollars an hour to uh, figure out why this stuff was making him sick, right. after after the power company, uh, he spent a half a million dollars to have the power company put the substation feeders underground, saying that would solve his uh, <laughs> his problem, and it made it worse. Well, you know, half a million dollars—that's a lot of money to shove down a rat hole for them to make ne a nest out of. Yeah. He was pretty upset about that. Blinding. So the power company thought they were going to get sued. So, uh, so you know, I have the reputation of being, you know, like the only guy in the country that can figure that stuff out. So he found me. Uh, Camp David had just been destroyed. So, you know, I was like, you know, destitute out on the street, and I needed something. So $100 mm -hmm. an hour, I mean, that, that was nice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I started figuring out what was making them sick. And, uh, and that's when I learned how bad this cellular telephone stuff was. And then... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then, it only affects uh, some people. It doesn't affect everyone. Uh, well, his, his body was so out of balance it made him sensitive to everything. Mm -hmm. So I figured he was a hypochondriac, and I didn't want to rip him off by taking his money to support his delusions. Yeah. So what I did is, you know, I, I configured, uh, you know, uh, degaussing coils like on a ship made out of phone cable and, you know, and put him in these things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, it, and you know, did a test to see if he was really sensitive to this stuff. And the guy is remarkably... Uh, uh, beyond remarkably, almost impossibly sensitive to things. No way. And uh, the guy was just a detector for all this stuff, and then... Uh, it's a real stuff. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I, you know, and then he bought all the necessary equipment, you know, for me to put my, you know, surveillance stuff together and all those field strength meters and scopes and everything to find out what was going on. And I'll tell you, man, it was quite an education to find out, you know, Indeed, what was making this guy sick and, and you know, all these power line harmonics and AM radio oh stations using uh, unfiltered uh, digital music into their modulators was causing all these pulses to propagate through the phone cables of the entire town. And it wasn't uh, regulated by shit, the FCC? Shit, there is no regulation anymore. Huh. In fact, actually, there's the opposite. Well, I mean, what, to, to finalize... I mean, what advice can you offer for engineers and serious objective scientists in creating their own cosmic ray detector to replicate these interesting and anomalous effects? That you well, sell? the thing is, is just build the stuff as I instructed and experiment. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, this guy that calls himself Dr. Green, for someone that has no prior knowledge in this stuff, is doing an excellent job. You just have to experiment and keep going back. And, you know, I mean, I must have given, you know, over 200 reference books so far in this shit. But re now, remember, you know, I've been studying this stuff for about six years old. Mm -hmm. So you got a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, I mean, normally it takes about 12 years before you're adept at this stuff. You know, it's not like you just jump in and, and start. No one wants to learn the basics. No one wants to start from the beginning. They all, you know, it's all a stimulus gratification. I just want this. Yeah, well, I've been looking at your stuff for four years, and I can tell you, you know, I didn't get anything out of it instantly apart from a white page and a lot of text. Yeah, yeah well, like I, tried, uh, I tried with the writings, you know, to uh, to basically start with, like, with this, you know, Lone Pine writings thing is to 
to, to get to provide a, you know a, an independent education where you can start from scratch. But unless you experiment and do your own calculations and fool around, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's got to be a participatory thing. Unfortunately, it's not something like watching TV. Mm -hmm. And that's why most people don't get anywhere with it. But uh, I don't know. So at any rate, I think I got it because I'm going to take off today. So okay, I'll Eric, to kind of wrap this up. Otherwise, you know, I could keep going all day. <laughs> yeah, I know you could, and I really appreciate it, Eric. Uh, thank You're you welcome. So uh, very interesting. As okay. always. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you later, probably, or hopefully, or I don't know. I, can't, I don't know what to say, but I'm sure we'll all cross right. this again. Thank you, Eric. Uh, okay. You take care, all right, Eric. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.